Greetings everybody, this is it. The final part of my Metroid Marathon. So let's not waste any time and go to the last 2D Metroid game in the series, Metroid Zero Mission for the Game Boy Advance. In terms of the timeline, Metroid Fusion is the last game in chronological order. It's been over 9 years since this game's been released and there's still no sequel to this particular game. Why not? Anyway, in 2004 we were given Metroid Zero Mission, and this is, in actuality, an exact remake of the first game. Oddly enough, this is the first Metroid game I ever played, and as soon as I popped this baby into my Game Boy, my mind was blown away. It's amazing how much different the remake is compared to the original. Samus has the same abilities that she had in Super Metroid and Metroid Fusion, minus the climbing on ladders. And the wall jump has been fixed to work exactly like it did in Super Metroid. Kudos to Nintendo for doing that. Although in order for Samus to grab onto ledges, she has to obtain the power grip first. In Fusion, Samus is able to do that naturally, so I'm guessing that because this is at the beginning of the timeline, this explains how she got the power grip in Fusion. The progression has once again been changed. Located around Zebus are standing Chozo statues. Upon turning into your morph ball form on top of their hands, you're able to get a destination mark on your map to show you where to go next without showing you the exact area completely, leaving it up to you to figure out how to get there on your own. So, think of it as a mix of Fusion's linearity and Super Metroid's non-linearity. The ultimate goal in the game is to once again defeat Ridley and Kraid and wipe out the Mother Brain. And along your adventure, you'll come across power-ups that'll boost Samus' arsenal. Added to the remake are power-ups from Super Metroid and Fusion, including the Super Missiles and the Speed Booster. But once again, the reserve tanks are nowhere to be seen, as well as the Grapple Beam, the X-Ray Visor, and the Diffusion Missiles. And yes, this even means us having to track down the Long Beam again. Jesus Christ, whose idea was this? New to the remake are ancient Chozo statues which hold an unknown item, although I'm pretty sure by looking at the symbols on these tiles you'll be able to tell what they are. Unfortunately, these items are incompatible with Samus' suit, making her unable to use them. And collecting these items plays what's probably the most overly dramatic melody in Metroid history. I'd certainly like to use that tune no matter what I'm doing in my life. <gasps> the game froze on me. I'm all out of soda. I'm reading the paper. All the areas that we saw from the original are back with updated graphics and parallax scrolling backgrounds. Brinstar, Norfair, Kraid's Lair, Ridley's Lair, Torian, and returning from Super Metroid, Criteria. In terms of the graphics, this is undoubtedly the best looking 2D Metroid game made so far. While Super Metroid's graphics were amazing, and with Fusion making them even better, Zero Mission has perfected it and it's gotta be one of the best looking Game Boy Advance games out there. While the areas are still faithful to the original, none of them look alike from one another and the attention to detail is definitely a sight for sore eyes. New areas have also been given to make the game feel fresh for old school gamers. But as well as that, like in Super Metroid and Fusion, the remake gives us little cutscenes to watch to add a sense of paranoia. The music once again is awesome, with my favorite tune still being Craze Lair. In terms of the bosses, not only do Craig and Ridley make an appearance, but we're also given new bosses to fight. Craig, like in Super Metroid, is massive compared to his NES counterpart, and Ridley certainly looks a hell of a lot more threatening than that Barney the Dinosaur character from the original. So, you know what to do, defeat Craig and Ridley and advance to Torian to fight the Mother Brain. Before entering Torian, we're shown another cutscene that introduces us to the Metroids in case if you hadn't played any other Metroid game apart from this one. And once again, thanks to the Super Missiles, they're pretty damn easy to kill. Although this time they don't stay frozen for long, so you better be quick. Because this is a retelling of the first game, this means Mother Brain doesn't have a cybernetic body to dispose of you. Though you still have those incredibly annoying Rinkas and turrets, and hey, look at that! Mother Brain actually tries to defend herself! And that's her only attack! Oh uh, well, I guess that's better than nothing. Anyway, after defeating Mother Brain, we once again have to escape the planet before it explodes. And that is the end of Metroid Zero Mission, ladies and gentlemen. Or is it? Space Pirates have found Samus' a ship and shoot her back down to Zebus, stripped from her power suit and her ship destroyed. Why exactly does Samus take off the suit in the first place? I mean, I know she just completed her mission, but still, you never know what lies ahead. Welcome to Chisodia, ladies and gentlemen. A completely new area added to the remake. So, we've lost everything. The suit, the power-ups, all of it. 
and it's still up to you to travel through the Space Pirate Mothership and see what you can find. Along the way you'll come across Space Pirates of different numbers. If one of them spots you, run as fast as you can. The only thing Zero Suit Samus has is this crappy pistol that does jack all except for stunning the Space Pirates for a few seconds when fully charged. Now this portion of the game, in my opinion, is probably the worst part. First time playing, it adds a bit of fear similar to the confrontations with the SEX and Fusion. But while doing multiple playthroughs, I just want this part to end. And upon getting further into the ship, we come across a Chozo Shrine which comes alive and challenges Samus to a test. Once you pass the test, you are given a new fully upgraded suit and the unknown items we found earlier are now compatible, turning into the Plasma Beam, the Space Jump, and the Gravity Suit. After whooping a bit of Space Pirate ass, we eventually come across a dark empty room with something that sounds desperate for oil. Getting closer and closer, we see that it's... a Ridley robot. An unfinished mechanized version of Ridley. Now his toughness actually depends on how many items you collect in your adventure. Collecting all of them triples his health and attack power, probably making him the hardest boss in the game. Upon defeating him, we have yet another self-destruct sequence. Samus takes one of the space pirate pods and flees from the mothership, leaving the crumbly remains of Zebus to bite the dust. Now we've completed Zero Mission. It's pretty obvious at this point, but you're shown your completion time along with the percentage of items collected and your ending. And beating the game fast enough allows you to see Samus out of her power suit. Which in this game is a pretty lame award. We just spent a whole section of the game playing as her, so how is this a reward? If you manage to beat the game, which I guarantee you will, you'll unlock the original Metroid for you to pick up and play. The gameplay is exactly like it is on the NES, so I'm not really going to go into further detail about it. Metroid Zero Mission is simply amazing. This completely triumphs over the original, hands down. Nintendo's taken everything that made Super Metroid good as well as things that made Fusion good to produce this beautiful game. But that's not saying this game is perfect. The only two things I can complain about is for one, the length of the overall adventure. This game is short. Like, really short. Even shorter than Fusion. This has got to be the shortest Metroid game in existence. And the last negative thing I have with this game is the difficulty. This game is ridiculously easy. One of the easiest games I have ever played, and certainly the easiest Metroid game so far. I mean, look how fast I can beat Ridley! Wow, I honestly did not think you could get any easier than your NES counterpart. This unfortunately goes for all the bosses. You got an incredibly easy worm and an incredibly easy insect. The only boss that gave me any sort of trouble was the mother brain, because anytime you fall down below the blocks, her eye closes and as soon as you get back up, she'll try and knock you back down again. And the Rinkas and turrets don't help either. But hey, why am I complaining? I wanted a more challenging boss and, well, I got it. Now there are different levels of difficulty, but there isn't really that much difference besides the tank capacity and the amount of damage Samus absorbs. And by the way, I was on the normal difficulty while recording this footage. I can't imagine what the easy mode is like. But anyway, if you're just getting into the series and you don't know where to start, start with this game. But be aware of the difficulty. It's most definitely a highly memorable experience of the first game. But in terms of difficulty, I think Fusion is the better game to play. With all said, I'll give this game a 9.4 out of 10, standing for easy as hell, but fun as hell. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of my Metroid Marathon. And I really do apologize that I'm currently unable to record footage from the Prime games Another M. But when that day comes, we're going to jump from one dimension to another in Samus' first 3D adventure, Metroid Prime for the GameCube. So with all that out of the way, happy birthday Samus, thank you Nintendo, and may there be another 25 years of greatness. So that does it for some of the Metroid games, but there is yet another franchise celebrating its 25th birthday. It stars a little elf kid with a sword and shield stabbing bad guys and restoring an ancient artifact known as the Triforce. And as you can see, I got posters of this franchise on my wall. I am of course talking about the Legend of Zelda series. Until then, I'm Josh Smith for Reviews of Yesteryear. Take care.